I, I started this channel last year too, so. I was first introduced to the Scarlet Pimpernel a few years ago when I was doing some homework and I needed something to play in the background. Needless to say, the sermon that I was working on, ostensibly at the time, wound up being written about five minutes before I delivered it. Can you blame me? I mean, Scarlet Pimpernel would yell at somebody too, too. I wound up watching and re-watching the movie a multitude of times. It, it took a lot. I um, spent more time than I'm comfortable admitting studying Anthony Andrews' legs to see how the fit was accomplished. Right, so I think we're about done. For the bridges, I decided to use a cream-colored uh, watered silk fell that was at my favorite discount fabric warehouse. For $4.50 a yard, I wound up purchasing two pieces of the fabric, each about two and a half yards, and it was really quite nice. It is quite nice. There's actually enough that I think I can accomplish a proper court suit and not just a broken suit. The fit of the britches was a bit of a, a bear because I've used this pattern before for my two flower cosplay and I did not quite properly fit. This build I wound up making four or five mock-ups, five if you count two flower. But two of those mock-ups were actually from the pattern provided in Nora Wall's The Cut of Men's Clothes. I wound up having to shorten the bridges quite a bit, about four inches from the original pattern. The gentleman that this pattern is drafted for is obviously much taller and slimmer because no matter how many different times I try with the back, no matter how full I cut it, it is the back is never quite full enough for true accuracy. Um, so I always wind up having to insert a larger gusset than normal. I wound up having to add a gusset uh, at the calf fitting for where the, um, and what is known as tightest leg according to the pattern it was quite fine however whenever I tried it on it wouldn't fit close, it would not close properly and I knew that if I just simply carried on then I would have more trouble later on with buttons, buttons popping when they shouldn't so I added a gusset which was cut from the same pattern piece as the back gusset which is a Concern.
1982 film was my introduction to the Scarlet Pimpernel. I actually wound up purchasing a paperback copy then, and I read that on a uh, group trip to England. I finished it uh, because, well, we were passing a bookshop and they had, they had Brideshead Revisited and we were in Bristol and I had just finished blazing through Good Omens for the fifth time. Ten out of ten recommend good omens. Tell me. <laughs> yes, tell me. Oh, I'm sorry. Here it is, pinned up. It's all pinned together. I also pinned the waistband on. This is not how it's going to look in the end, but yeah, I, I absolutely understand why they would dress like this then. It is so comfortable. It's just, you know, I mean, that executed in different fabrics and in different cuts, it's even more comfortable. This is not bad. I mean, it's just, and it's flattering too. I mean, this is just, I, I get why <laughs> they would dress like this then. And it's tempting now. So I need to do the waist, the flap topper thing here, put the waistband on and do the pocket bands and the knee bands and everything. But other than that, yeah, it's decent. And I might wind up making some more of these. Yeah. For the bum, I wound up cutting the pattern a bit fuller than normal because I did want to go for the period accurate sort of diaper bum effect. Look, I'm not meeting anyone anytime soon, and how else am I supposed to get a girl's number? This winning personality? In a pandemic? Oh well. This is supposed to overlap by about, oh, say, half an inch or so. And when I was attaching this, I did not plan for it to overlap, for the overlap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create buttonhole stitch, an opening for the ribbon, and then finish in the usual manner. And all of this has to be uh, pinked at least, and this is some of the best buttonholing I have ever done. Zach Pinsent would be proud, I think.
this channel about a year ago, or a little under a year ago, uh, to see if I liked doing it. <laughs> I did, to a degree. Unfortunately, I realized I also really hated it, which resulted in a rather uncalled for uh, rant of sorts on social media. I realize that there is a lot of work that goes into creating a video. And at the same time, I also realize that it's not something I really enjoy. I enjoy the research. I enjoy the writing a great deal, actually. And I enjoy the sewing. I don't enjoy having to think of camera angles. I don't enjoy having to edit nearly six hours of raw footage into a 20 minute video. I don't enjoy having to think about will this fabric strode on a video? Will this stitching uh, show up properly on camera? Am I in frame? <laughs> I really don't enjoy that. Uh, I don't enjoy having to think about the noise factor. I don't enjoy having to do a sound balance. I do enjoy photographing the work. I enjoy writing about what I do. I will continue posting on this channel. It will be erratic at best. When I do post, the Costube Symposium social media will let anyone know. Most likely what will happen is the videos will be um, either shorter videos showing what I've done lately, or more like video essays researching certain aspects of historic menswear. I do plan on doing a couple of videos that are very specific, but I won't say simply because I don't want to commit to something on camera that I will not carry out in real life. Back to scheduled programming. 